It is our choices that show what we truly are far more than our abilities. J.K. Rowling. Oh, snap. What's tea, girls? You've just tuned in to Broken Women Win podcast, discovering purpose in Christ beyond our ramshackle past. I am none other than your hope dealer, Ashley Williams, coming to snatch you out of the trenches of despair. So sit back, grab a snack, get something to drink, because honey, we've got a lot to discuss. What's poppin', my good people? Hey, y'all. And guess what? On this episode, you won't just hear me alone. I told you I was going to have something really special for you, and I do. So with this episode, I have Mr. Carlton Speaks. Yes, honey. He's going to be dropping some knowledge, giving a little bit of wisdom from his end. So I don't want to chit-chat long uh, because our interview, you know, was about 40 minutes long. So, hey, get you something to drink, a snack or something, and let's get into it. I hope you enjoy. I'm so excited to uh, introduce our guest of the hour. And you know, we like interviews over here because we like to get our, our extra knowledge in and our extra juices flowing, you know, in a godly way. How are you, Mr. Falconer? I'm good, Miss Williams. How are you? I am so excited. I'm cheesing through the telephone, through the microphone. That's good. That's yes. Good. <laughs> I'm so excited. So um, give the people just a brief inter- introduction. It doesn't have to be brief. Just tell the folks about you, who you are, and, you know, I'm going to let you toot your own horn. So let them know who you are and where you're from. That sounds great. I just want to thank you, uh, Ashley, for um, having me um, on your podcast and your show. I'm completely honored, completely humbled. Absolutely. I'm, I'm honored, too. <laughs> yes, yeah, so I'm grateful, you know, to be speaking to your audience a little background about me i'm super humble so to my own horn is not my thing but <laughs> um my uh, my name is carlton falconer jr uh, i am the founder and creator of carlton speaks um, i started this brand a couple years ago and within my brand um it started out as me as a christian blogger Mm-hmm. Um, writing monthly and weekly blogs to focus on the areas of spiritual encouragement and spiritual uplifting. Uh, within my brand, um, I also do life coaching. Okay, awesome. I am an, go ahead. Yeah, awesome. That's awesome. Yes, yeah, so I do life coaching. I do uh, women empowerment. I'm a huge advocate uh, for that. So my brand, you know, primarily focuses on spiritual uplifting and the empowerment and the encouragement of women. Um, Outside of my brand, I am a um, associate minister um, in my home church, uh, Mount Eric Baptist Church in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. And I've been a minister for the last six months. So I wear a lot of different hats. um, I see. But I'm grateful that God has called me to uh, do each of these things. Um, These things do get overwhelming from time to time, but I wouldn't trade this for anything. So uh, thank you again for having me. That's just a little bit about me. Um, I enjoy everything that I do from my ministry work to my life coaching work to women empowerment to blogging. to you know, providing social media messages and posts. Again, my focus is just to really provide all of us the spiritual uplifting that we need yes. um, in the world we live in today. Um, yes. It's a it's a crazy world, and to be transparent and to be honest, I don't feel we promote God enough. Yeah, in that's the, world the truth. That we live in. Um, we promote everything before you know you'll hear more about you know cardi b before you hear about god right which in the world we live in you know that's what people tend to gravitate towards but my focus is to keep the focus on the on the person where who needs that attention who deserves that attention and the reason that we are here absolutely Uh, so so that's just really my focus so um again i'm excited for this opportunity Absolutely. And you know what? And it's always exciting to um, to actually have men that are real followers of Christ, that really have the heart of God, that actually encourage women. I mean, that's really okay. rare. I mean, I've been to some, you know, so-called women empowerment, you know, seminars before. And, you know, they have they lead by the title of God. 
and by the title of Jesus and you know we go by this standard but when I got there I kind of felt like I was had or got if that makes sense because when I got there I'm like mm, like dude like curse like the whole time I was like mm. Okie dokie then I'm like you charge how much a pop And the room was like loaded It was full of women because you have so many women That you know number one They're hungry um, Some of them may be desperate from time to time And you know especially women that are in the church When you see you know that it's a man A fairly nice looking man that's single And he's promoting God and saying that, that God will bring this to you and his, you know, Especially when it comes to like a mate You know that's a, a huge area for women to flock to So I was just kind of sitting in there like Eh, what but when I ran across your page like months ago I was like okay yeah so this is this is some consistency here and then you know your posts they also have they have depth it's just not I don't know it's not it doesn't seem like it's fluff and then when we connected I was like you know what because you know I called you my my internet bff so <laughs> so when we connected I was like you know what this this right here this is gonna be my best friend and I'm like hey best friend how you doing and it was nothing you know on on a uh, disrespectful level but it was all you know to upbuild the kingdom talking about you know what God has done in my life even giving my testimony you know it was just it was just really awesome and my prayer has been for God to lead me to my tribe the prayer has been for God to lead me to people that hold the pieces to my destiny you know and if I hold the pieces to whoever else's destiny you know help me you know help pull whatever it is out of them that's supposed to be there so that leads me to the actual topic of what the podcast is about which is the importance of godly connections so how do you how do you feel about godly connections do you feel like that's something that's important or something that you know people often overlook or how do you go about your godly connections i think it's a little bit of all of the above which you mentioned um, i feel godly connections are extremely important i feel that if you're not connected to god or anything that is connecting you to god it can ultimately do more damage than it does benefit right Right. You know, and I was just thinking about that earlier, right? It's almost it's almost to the extent to where God, if you're not connected to God or you're not connected to anything that's connecting you to him, that ultimately delays our blessings. Oh, that's that's and, the truth. And and I was thinking about it because I was um talking to one of my clients and you know, I was going through giving the illustration of when we see a vending machine. Mm -hmm. that's broken and it says out of order do we put money into it mm, that's good yeah that's we don't, good we don't put money into a vending machine that's out of order right right so why would god put blessing give us blessings if we're out of order or if we're not aligned with our assignment if we're right. out of alignment with our assignment then god is not going to necessarily it's not that he's not going to bless us because sometimes people feel God will deny our blessings. God mm -hmm. will never deny anything. God is only going to delay it. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So if we think about, let's say, the right connection, the right connection, depending on who we are connected to or what habits we're connected to, will determine how soon we get our blessings or how soon we complete the assignment that God has called us to do. Right. So if I have a, if I'm watching Netflix on a tablet, right, and I have a poor Wi-Fi connection, guess what? That video is going to be delayed, right? Oh yes, yes, it's yes. Gonna, it's going to it's going to take a minute. It's going to keep buffering and buffering and buffering, right? Right, right. So so our so here's the here's the thing, Ashley. Our blessings are buffering sometimes. Oh, they're buffering. That's good. Right? That's so good. They're, That's they're, a word. They're buffering. They're, they're buffering. Why? Because we're connected to the wrong people. We're connected to the wrong habits. We're connected to just the wrong relationships. Mm -hmm. So God is, you know what I mean? So that that so when it comes to godly connections, it's that's the most important thing. Who am I connected to? Am I connected to God, or am I connected to a person that's connected to God? Mm -hmm. Because if I'm connected to a person that's bringing me away from God, more than he's pulling me, he or she is pulling me towards God then you know that's something that you want to you want to hop off that wow. i mean you want to you want to listen you want to block that connection 
you want to most oh, definitely block that know. connection. You want to be like, no, this is not the direction that we're supposed to be going in. So speaking of connections and everything that you say, that was just, I mean, so on point. I'm sitting over here like, mm-hmm, in my closet looking at my <laughs> shoes. And I'm like, yes, that's good. And this is something that, you know, that my tribe, they need to hear. And a lot of people, like I said, they don't talk about, you know, the realness of you actually connecting yourself to people. And so speaking of connections, uh, how did we connect? Tell the people just a little, which I told them a little bit of a, a brief story about how we connected. Uh, but tell them how we connected and give one word that describes our connection. Um, I was thinking about the word and I was going back on a, a few of them. And one that stuck out to me was power. Yeah, I think this connection that we have is powerful because there's a lot of knowledge between us. There's a lot of wisdom. There's a lot of love for God between the two of us. Right, right. Just that alone is just that's so powerful because we're talking about the topic of godly connections. And that's to me, I feel like God always leads. He's led me to a lot of different people um, that are connected to God or that can give me a different insight on God or a different viewpoint. So, you know, again, we connected through Instagram. You know, uh, you followed my work and saw some consistency. I followed you and saw the same thing. And, you know, we don't, I don't go to uh, turn best friend around lightly. So, right. <laughs> you know I mean? So when you mentioned like, hey, we're going to be internet BFFs, I'm like, I'm all about it because um, I love what you're doing. And um, just even the concept of your brand you know broken women win especially with women empowerment and that's a huge part of it because again broken women can win absolutely absolutely and the main thing about that the main thing about that is being again it goes back to being connected to the right things because again if you're connected to doubt fear failure you know everything that broke you in the first place how do you become whole again if i'm telling still connected you. to those things right so then that could be in the terms of people reminding you of what you did that could be just your own internal insecurities or your own internal you know you keep thinking about failure and oh i failed 20 times right but that doesn't necessarily mean that you can't be whole again that doesn't necessarily mean you can't do what god has called you to do and some of the people that have been broken ultimately have been rebuilt better and stronger to do what God has called them to do. Absolutely. You know what I mean? So that's just something that, um, again, so I, I love the idea of Broken Women Win. Uh, I was listening to your podcast. We had a conversation and you told me about where you recorded your podcast. And I was shocked because I'm driving. I was driving home and I was listening to your podcast. And it sounded smooth. Right. And when you told me how you did it, I said, that's how you did it. Yeah. <laughs> Listen, it you wasn't know, nobody so. but the Lord that hooked that thing up. I promise you, because I knew I, I had. I had a vision. I still have a vision. And man, listen, honestly, my dreams are so big. They like they won't let me rest. And in this season, it's like the weight that's on me. Like I can't just sit and twiddle my thumbs. And even back to, you know, back to my brand with Broken Women Win, I tell them all the time, you know, I can only uh, teach you where I've been. I can't take you somewhere I've never been before. And because I know what it's like to feel defeated and I know what it's like, you know, to be broken from divorce, being in a domestic violence relationship, um, losing things, going through financial hardship, having people um, remind you of things that they've done for you and hanging things over your head. I mean, all of the guilt. I understand exactly what it feels like. And I have such a compassion for broken people. So those that, you know, um, have the church have thrown away and those women and even some of the men, too, because, like, you know, I have some fellas that listen too. so some of those people that um, that the church has just said, you know what? They just so nasty. They so dirty. They've done so much. You know, you ain't fit to live, you know, and ain't fit to die because you know, that's what the old folks used to say. You ain't fit to live and you ain't fit to die. So my heart you know, is just so on the scripture that says with love and compassion, have I drawn thee? And I said, God, I just always want to be in a place to where I can encourage the broken. And how do I do that? And so that's when the podcast, you know, came about because I actually thought I was going to do the podcast with my ex-husband. I just never could get it off the ground because 
that's not what I was supposed to be doing. It wasn't the, the time or the season, you know, for me to do that. So, you know, now here we are, you know, we, this is episode number 14. We're 14 episodes in. Uh, Broken Women Wins has been all over the place. And I'm excited about it. So the whole gist of um, the whole Godly Connection thing, it kind of made me think of the, uh, the story. I can't remember what chapter it was in or what book it was in. I don't remember but it's in the bible just put it like that and so and it was uh it was pretty much about the spirit of Korah where the Lord had called a certain sector of people from among the other people that were ungodly they weren't you know they were pretty much a curse they weren't doing um what they was commanded to do and so it's vitally important for us to be connected to the right people because when we're not just like those folks he told them come from among them and they didn't so what happened the earth opened up and it swallowed them all cattle women men children everything and so here it is you can be guilty you know by association so i figured i said you know what this whole godly connection thing this is something that people need to hear because we don't hear it a lot you know folks just they get with whoever their emotions conjure up and then they say oh well this is god and no it's not god you know that it's not God. And so you have to figure out a way. How am I going to get out of this? And sometimes God just tells you, look, cut it off, leave. And then in some instances, you can hear him say that and you're rebellious. And then you have bad things that happen. So speaking of cutting it off and leaving, have you ever been um, in a situation, uh, maybe a business partnership, relationship or whatever, where you knew the connection was not the will of God for your life and you had to break free? And if you did, how did you break free from it? Yeah, I mean, and that's um, that's a good good question, and one that I I had looked at, and one that you know you you think about <clears throat> as we go through life. I think at some point in life, there are some things that we do have to learn that, like you mentioned, they're not in the will of God. You know, there are certain people, and I always preach and tell people that everybody can't go with you to the next level. No, they can't, honey. You know, everybody can't go to the next level with you because God is calling you to be a better version of yourself. Come on, and what God is calling us to do, it's like you can't do certain things. Right. So when when I was in a phase of, you know, loving the nightlife type of thing, I knew that the people that would connect me to the nightlife, I knew I had to not necessarily cut them all the way off. But I had to limit how much. Right, I was you had to taper it down. You had to taper your exactly. connection down. Yeah. yeah, because at the end of the day, if I'm consistently connected to them, then ultimately it's going to keep me connected to that type of lifestyle. And I know that what God is calling me, God is calling me. Hey, I'm calling you here, but I can't stay over there. So again, you have to sometimes, you know, minimize a connection. Or, right. Hey, I'm gonna jump onto another. Can I have to connect? I have to connect more to what's connecting me to God and what he's called me to do. So everyone can come to you, can with you to the next level. Um, I've had relationships in the past um, where, again, it was hurting me or taking me away from what God was calling me to do, whether it was taking me out of my character, whether it was taking me away from doing something that God assigned me to do. Right, distraction. So again, distractions, yeah. So at the end of the day, to me, I feel in the season that I was in, especially in this year, that I couldn't afford any distractions. Right. So again, you have to, anybody, anything that is distracting me from what God has called me to do, no offense, no hard feelings, you have to go. Right, right. And it's not, and it's not because I'm ignorant, it's not because I don't care about you, it's not because I don't love you, it's not because I'm bougie, it's not because God has called me to be a minister and I'm a new person or I'm holier than thou, that's not the reason that I got to cut this connection off. It's because, you're in a sense, you're bringing extra baggage that I don't need. Right. Or, or I'm carrying, I'm already carrying 200 pounds of weight that God told me to carry. Hey, I need you to carry this weight, right? And you're adding 300 more pounds. So not only am I carrying the 200 pounds that God has assigned me to carry, that's my assignment. Mm -hmm. But if, if, if I'm carrying 300 extra pounds, of course, my back is going to start to give out. My knees are going to be sore. And guess what? Again, like I said, it goes into delaying what God has called me to do. Because what do you, how do you, if we're looking at it, if I'm carrying 200 pounds, God knows I can get to a certain distance 
with that amount of weight, say hypothetically, hey, it's going to take you 10 minutes to get to where I need you to go. Right. But with 500 pounds of weight on my back, it's going to take an extra 20, 30. By that time, God is like, you know what? Hey, I got to lay that blessing. You're and you, here. right right and, and the crazy part about that the the whole delay in the blessing is you know when we drag people along that are not supposed to go with us yes it's dead weight but sometimes folks they just want to ride your coattail because see they see where uh-huh. you're going even if you right, can't see right. it they're like right, okay right. yeah i see yeah yeah this right here they about to be popping real soon they about to have this going on but i don't want to really encourage them you know and i was saying in the last uh podcast that i recorded you know you have to watch people that say oh i see you your little business i see you started your little business you did your little right, right, such and right, such right. you know it's like slick shade that they throw but at the same time uh, they wow. know you like lit for christ and you like on point they know you load it and because they know that you're loaded you know they just want to you know be right there where you are they want to be connected it's not like it's a difference between people calling to make sure you're okay and people calling and checking in just to make sure they still have access to you it's a huge difference that's it's a huge huge difference and another thing i was gonna mention too ashley is um i had mentioned in my last blog about uh sometimes the closest people to you become an enemy and i also mentioned that and, and like you know sometimes connections might be a connection initially mm-hmm. but then it might become a toxic connection yes it will shift and, and at the end of the day when we look at someone who is robbing a house they are not going to rob a house that's in they don't rob vacant houses there's nothing in there so just like you said some people will ride your coattails or some people are going to attack you because they know where you're going and they might not want you to get there that's good right? yeah that that's the you know, truth they don't and that's the they it, don't because i think today if somebody is looking to rob a house they're going to identify a house that has a lot of valuable things mm, in it. that's and so good a, yeah they're gonna lay in wait a lot of times yeah exactly so at the end of the day so i, I feel like i'm being under attack by someone i'm connected to or anything along those lines more often than not like you said hey they know where you're going maybe they want to delay you getting it. right or but anytime Right, but you know, anytime the enemy sends a, an attack, it's never from the outside. It's always from those that are closest to you. Because, see, he knows that, okay, I can't get them with these random people right here because they're not dear to them. They don't care. You know, and I was saying yesterday when I, I was recording the vlog, and I said, you know, the thing about the enemy is he can only ensnare you in your emotions because your emotions is flesh. He can ensnare your spirit. So he knows that if he gets you down in your emotions, if he gets you down, you know, thinking that, man, well, maybe what they said was the truth. Maybe I shouldn't start this business. Maybe I should just stop, you know, doing this because who am I? I'm just one little person. Who am I? What kind of connections do I have? Especially when you're like sprouting out of like dry soil and you're the only one that's like in your circle or around you doing what you're doing. It makes it even harder. But you just have to kind of, you know, consider yourself just like the same and you just have to like swim against the current and say you know what is it really going to be worth it in the end and speaking of swimming against the current what was home life for you um what was it was it rough growing up um do you have a lot of people around you that do what you do how did you pick up what what you're doing now it, i mean it's, it's funny because my home life wasn't the best um i had two great parents um, we grew up and we lived in a, um, a project-based um, community. Um, it's called Murphy Heights, and that's located in Pittsburgh, um, Pennsylvania. And it's a, it's a project-based neighborhood, you know, low income, you know, that type of thing. So it was a neighborhood that was rough. I mean, you got, you know, drug dealers, you got people shooting, you got people robbing, killing, and you don't have a lot of people that are about Christ. <laughs> right. So, I mean, in that environment, my home life, my mom and dad are both excellent people but they aren't they weren't two people that were constantly bringing me to church or constantly pushing me to church or sitting down with me and showing me the bible and a lot of times i for the for the longest i didn't really understand everything i knew it was a a god in the sky per se right but i never really knew understood the points of Easter and Christmas, it was almost more so the commercialization of it, right? right. To where I knew Easter, hey, we, you know, I, you know, get a nice little outfit and 
go to church. You right, know? and so you sit there with your noisy, right, you sit there with the noisy Easter baskets and don't nobody know what's going on and, you know, the can-can yeah. stuff under the dresses because that's what the girls wore from here. The dresses right. just made you itch because they had this fluffy stuff up under But you was cute, though. <laughs> you was right, cute. Right, right, right. Yeah, so that's what it was. I mean, Christmas was the same thing. It was Santa Claus and I'm getting a PlayStation and video games and wrestling figures, right? And that's kind of what I knew growing up. Now, my late grandmother was big in the church and she was a deacon before she passed. And I think that's where my connection kind of started to where my grandmother would make us come to church, to her church on Easter. And, you know, we went there a few times on New Year's. So, again, growing up, I really didn't have like a church, churchy upbringing. Right. I had a rough around the edges upbringing. And as I went to college, uh, my late co- my late basketball coach, uh, Scott Lane, at Lowell's College, um, was big into, I went to um, a Catholic school, Catholic college, and one of the things that he emphasized was God. Right. And just he emphasized it to the point to where it's like, hey, we are nothing without God. And we will pray before practice, after practice, you know, we will pray before games, after games. And again, he instilled in us to walk around and allow people to see Jesus in us. Right. And that was the first time that I was challenged to do that. I'm like, what does that even mean? But it's just to display the characteristics of a godly man. Right. And to me, that was something that he was big on because it's like, I don't want you guys walking around campus and, oh, those basketball players are jerks. It's going to be those are the nicest guys. <laughs> right. The nicest team. You know, not from an athletic perspective, not from a cool perspective, but those are the nicest guys on campus. Right. And it's not necessarily because we're just polite, but it's like people can see God in us. The way we would hold doors for people, we would treat the janitor the same way we treat the chancellor of the college, right? And he instilled those principles in us, and that's where it really started. That I really started to develop that relationship with God, and eventually it led me to, you know, finding my home church. And, you know, I've been there, you know, for the last, you know, I give or take, say, five or six years, you know, becoming a minister this year. But as I got older, I started to really get in more into church and really learn the true meaning of Easter. Why do we celebrate Easter? Right. And understand, you know, not necessarily, okay, there's a God in the sky, but why do I serve God? Do I just serve God because it makes sense? Because, oh, when people say there's a God in the sky that can make miracles happen. Do I serve God for that reason? Or did I develop my, man, I've been through so much that I know God is real. So if somebody asks me God is real, it's not because, oh, I can go pull up my Bible and say, look, here's where Jesus is real. No, it's, man, you know what? (laughs) This is what, this is how I know I got record for myself. I got record for myself. And that's why I always tell people that getting to know God and building your faith is an experience that's there's there, you you read it you can go to church but again if it's not an experience overall from your life to the church to anything else then again you're just going to say okay i know there's god i know he's there i've heard of god but do you truly know god absolutely you, you truly know god not only in your you know your sunny seasons or your summer seasons but you really get to go god in your winter season you're back in the ball when you got to overcome some things Listen. that's when you know god is real because it's like i knew i couldn't do this by myself i know my back was against the wall i know i had all the odds stacked against me but i still stood there and i fought the good fight of faith and guess what i'm on the other side and that's when you standing. shift that's when you shift at that point in time when you get to that point, that's when you shift from relationship, from uh, religion to relationship. Relationship, absolutely. That's exactly how you shift. You know, people can introduce you to Christ. Um, you can have uh, folks that give you uh, all kind of daily devotions and scriptures and all that other stuff. But once you really get to know the Father for yourself, I mean, it takes your faith to another level. Okay, your relationship with him changes because think about it when you're dating someone, when you're in a courtship with someone, um, would you want that person to just come to you only when they want something? How would it make you feel if they only talked to you? They only came to you when it was something that they wanted. 
you would feel horrible. And that's exactly how God feels when we don't spend personal time with him. When we don't give give God um, that time that we need to just really just replenish our soul. And and even sometimes with, with praying and connecting with God, sometimes you have to connect with him and just not say anything, but just sit in his presence and wait for him to download. You know, we're just, we're in a generation where people just feel like, you know, they always have to say something. They have to say something. They always have to be busy. They have to be moving. You know, but the Bible says to be still and know that I am God and you don't have to always be talking because he he judges the intent of your heart anyway. You don't have to always be talking. Sometimes you have to just and sometimes you got stuff going on. that's just so heavy to you. Just you can't talk. And then sometimes, you know, you're so thankful because of where you've been and what he's brought you out of till you can't talk. So you just bask in the presence. And and awesome. even with basking in the presence, you know, God just downloads these nuggets. You know, the word says that he reveals his secrets to his friends, you know. So it's like he tells you these things. He begins to show you these things, you know, and then they come to pass. And you're like, oh, I never would have looked at it that way. I never thought about it this way. And that only comes with spending, you know, quality time. I mean, carving the time out to spend that time with God. And so, um As far as the godly connections, can you give us some keys on identifying godly connections? Yeah, I think identifying godly connections, I think there's a lot of different ways that you can. One of the main ways that I would do it and the way that I would really identify a godly connection is to ask yourself one question. Does this connection bring me closer to God or pull me away from God? Mm Mm-hmm. That's good. That that's that's to me that that's a that's the most basic but most powerful question that you can ask yourself. Now that's with people, that is with habits, that is with anything that you are connected to. Mm-hmm. You have to ask yourself and be real with yourself and ask, does this connection bring me closer to God? So it's the same thing with relationships that I've had. Okay, does this person bring me closer to God? Meaning, are they leading me to God? Are they empowering and encouraging me to get to know God on a deeper level or are they pulling me away from him as far as taking me out of my character or you know instead of us praying oh well let's go to a movie or let's do different things or even deeper than that yeah instead of us praying we somewhere laying up because I'm all in my flesh you know what I'm saying like you gotta make sure that that thing glorifies God and you know and sometimes you know people will say well that ain't in the Bible what is scripture at but there is a scripture that says that all things are lawful but all things are not expedient, meaning it may not necessarily be wrong, but it don't look right. And you shouldn't partake in it because the Bible says to flee evil and do good. And it also says to not let the your, uh, your good be evil spoken of and to flee from the appearance of evil. So if it don't look right, you don't need to be doing it because you don't know who is also watching. And because sometimes we can be the only church that people see. And I I know a lot of the people that I'm called to, I will never get a chance to meet them. They'll be able to hear my voice, but I'll never get a chance to meet them. And sometimes you're the only church. Me, that's all that they see. So you have to be very mindful of of how you carry yourself because you don't want to misrepresent Christ. You don't want to do that. And a lot of times Christ, two people have been misrepresented and that's why they don't want to come to church. That's why they don't want to be connected to God. That's why they don't want to be connected to you because they they feel like, you know, they feel like all church people are just fake and phony, hypocritical, judgmental, which a lot of them are. But, you know, you just have to just ask God to lead you to those people. Connect God, connect me to the people that I am called to because I understand that I'm not called to everybody. Exactly. And that's the thing that we have to realize and, you know, have to really understand that we're not assigned to everybody. Everybody is not our assignment. We're not assigned Mm -mm. to be connected to everybody. You know what I mean? And when we're identifying, you know, godly connections and characteristics and different things of that nature, you have to watch a person from start to finish. Oh yeah. You have to see a person outside of church because I mean a lot of times some reason that sometimes people do have a stigma or this perception that sometimes no church folk are a certain way. Because again, like you said, sometimes the only church that people see is that person. 
and I've encountered people who are within the church, right? But again, outside of church, they aren't necessarily embodying the characteristics Child, of God. Child, what you say, Christ. honey? I'm a preacher so, kid, I mean? so listen, you and know, I grew and, up and in the church. The thing, yeah, because a lot of people see, okay, we're connected to the church. That doesn't necessarily mean that they are connected to God. Mm-mm. At you know, all, you know, you know what I'm saying? You know what I mean? At the end of the day, if a building has a Wi-Fi connection, but you're only in the building, but you're not connected to the source... Can you still get on the internet if you're not connected to the source? Right. Oh, you're in that building, but at the end of the day, some people show up at church, they clap their hands, stop their feet, right? But it's like if I see you at a grocery store, are you still embodying that same right, story? Right. There are some people that'll be in church clapping and singing, and you go see them at a grocery store, right? And they'll cut you in line. I'm telling you. What's that about? Cut you or in line and up. and cost you. In line. Exactly. exactly. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like wow. We and you be like, oh, lady, who are you? What? When you just the one? You just shouted your whole wig and your lashes and your eyebrows off. But now, wow. You just be like, oh, wow, wow. Listen, when I tell you this has been so needed, this has been so needed. It's been. Listen, I'm just sitting over here in this closet, looking at this wall, like Lord, <laughs> this is exactly what we needed to hear. Because people don't know how to connect or disconnect themselves from individuals. But before we go, um, I'm just like, I kind of want to like dig more. I'm like, okay, Jesus, like what's next? (laughs) <laughs> yeah, like we, we, we could definitely make this a series we, we could definitely have a, uh, a yeah part we do two. we need to do we need to do a part two for sure because yeah, my folks sure. they like when we sure do interviews yes yes my folks listen they they love when when i do interviews um when i bring somebody else in uh just for a, a fresh perspective and it's always like refreshing to hear a male you know that's dedicated and sold out and really have you know a heart and a passion for christ and no nobody is perfect absolutely not we're redeemed we're not perfect we're forgiven you know but you know you can still be who you are as an individual and still draw who god has called you to you don't have to be in a suit every day all day you don't have to do that so before we go i want you to speak a word you know over my listeners over my tribe um pray for them um, before we get off, off the line, I always pray with them before we go, but I want you to be able to grace them um, with whatever God lays on your heart. Absolutely. Um, Father, we come to you um, with humble hearts and open mind, Lord. And we ask, Father, that you continue to have your way in our lives. Yes, God. Continue to keep us connected to you. And I pray um, in this setting that you help us identify godly connections yes god and it can be so tough to discern sometimes it can be tough to figure out who's of god who's not of god because there are people who appear to be of god but again internally they may not be completely of god yes lord and i just pray lord that you just help us distinguish between the two and not necessarily right those individuals who may not be fully sold out for you. We have to learn to meet people where they are, and we may be the connection that they need. To. Yes. We may be the connecting cord, Lord, to you. So I just pray, Lord, that you assign us and align us, Lord, with the right individuals, with godly connections, and people who need to be connected to God. Because there are people that have starving spirits, Lord, that are starving to hear your word, that are starving to get to know this Christ and this God that everybody's been talking about. Yes, so Lord. I just pray, Lord, that you assign us and you connect us with people who, who need that connection. So in the same breath, while we may be seeking godly connections, Lord, I pray that we understand that we may be the godly connection that someone else is seeking Lord so just again open our minds open our hearts Lord again just bless you know us going into 2019 to disconnect or divorce from any negative or toxic connections or anything that's not bringing us closer to you anything that's taking us back to where we were anything that's taking us out of character anything that is not 
bringing you glory. Please discuss, disconnect us from it, Lord, whether that's a person, whether that is a habit, whether it's negative thoughts, whether it's fear, failure, doubt. Disconnect us from anything, Lord, that is not embodying your spirit. We love you, Lord. We thank you. We pray that you bless us throughout the rest of 2018. And we pray that you bless us going into 2019 with finding godly connections, but also being a godly connection for someone else. Yes, we God. love you and we ask for the forgiveness of your sins in your name. Amen. 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 Listen, it's got to be a part two. We gotta do I'm a part two. I'm ready. I'm we ready. we have ready. got to get together <laughs> and listen and and see and with some of my people that I do my podcast interviews with, I've never met. I've never met Mr. Carlton speaks face to face. Oh, but one day because see, I've already told them. I said 2019 and on and on, honey, it's gonna be popping for Broken Women Win, and I'm believing God that I'm gonna be able to take Broken Women Win. I mean, all over the world. And he's going to afford us the opportunity to actually be able to sit down and do a panel discussion. I'm excited. I got a lot of stuff like up my sleeve. And look, I'm just waiting to see what God going to do. I'm just waiting. Right. So it's good to know that you have people that are on board with you and that have the same heart, you know, and the same focus. And yeah, but I do want to bring you back to talk about, um, you know, entrepreneurship and, um, you know, being a faith based uh, content creator and all of that good stuff. But yeah, we'll talk about it. We'll talk about it. But once again, thank yeah, you we'll so like much. For sure. <laughs> Absolutely. Thank you so much. And my folks, I'm pretty sure they're excited. So you're probably going to have an influx of followers. Yeah. But thank you again. And uh, you'll be back for <laughs> part you. two. Thank you for the opportunity. Absolutely. So there you have it, you guys, the end of the episode. I really, really hope you enjoyed the nuggets that he had to drop. So he will be back for part two. And uh, yeah, I'm just so excited. 2019, I'll be doing more interviewing with different people. I'm getting different perspectives on uh, what their thoughts and their processes are um, with whatever endeavor they are walking through. So yes, once again, thank you guys. And I love you. And I will talk to you in the next episode. Bye bye. Thank you guys so much for listening and for all of your love and support is greatly appreciated. Please remember to rate, share, comment, and subscribe. And if you have any questions or anything you'd like me to discuss, slide in your girl's DM on Instagram. All of my social media platforms are Broken Women Win. That is Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. And you can also follow my blog on my website, which is BrokenWomenWin.com. Until next time, be breezy.